This is my video for the Rio Salado Nightfire Invitational held January 7th, 2022. I'm using my KE19 Stealth Special with Surefire X300 and Steiner MPS. The rifle I'm using is a What Would Stoner Do 2020 with Primary Arms Micro Prism and Surefire Scout Pro Mini. On this stage, the shooter begins by engaging the four steel plates at the back of the range about 50 yards away. They have to engage them from both sides of the range. The paper can be pistol or rifle, and the Texas Star is going to be pistol only. The footage recorded doesn't accurately reflect the lighting conditions on the range, both the effectiveness of the weapon lights and the ambient lighting without them. Nonetheless, even though this video is a little bit boring to watch, there are a couple topics to talk about I think are interesting. The accumulating muzzle smoke on this bay without any good airflow is obstructing my vision downrange when backlit by the weapon light. Through the optic, it actually kind of looks like a snowstorm. I can see all these particles in the air, and the more rounds fired, the more obscured the targets become. I've tried to make this video a little more interesting to watch by using uh, target hit indicators with a graphic on the screen when I'm engaging targets that you can't actually see. So hopefully this is still worth your while to view. This issue of targets being obscured downrange by weapon smoke being backlit by the weapon light isn't something I've encountered before. All the other low light matches I've done have been at close range where you can still clearly see the targets even with weapon smoke in the way. I'm shooting Fiocchi commercial ammunition. Perhaps other brands or types of ammunition would have less smoke generated for the same number of rounds fired. I did notice people that were shooting with suppressors on my squad encountered a similar problem, although I'm not sure that it was to the same degree. From a practical standpoint, if you encountered this problem in the field, you could simply move, relocate, or just reposition your body. Wasn't really an option when shooting in these positions on this stage. Show Rough stage for me, I was 36th out of 50 shooters with 39.08% of the winner's score. On this stage, the shooter begins anywhere in the shooting area with their rifle. The trapezoidal paper are all the rifle targets. After engaging those targets, they ground the rifle in the barrel and engage the pistol steel as they become visible. The yellow plate rack is no shoots. No problem seeing the paper here. It's all at 20 yards or less. There is a hard transition to almost the 180 line from each corner to see those far targets on both sides of the range. Uh, you're going to see me transition to that last one on this side slowly because I don't want to overswing in the dark and break the 180. Switching to handgun, I move to engage the first array of three poppers. The shoot plate racks behind the yellow plates are kind of a hunt and peck affair between the barrels and trying to make the hits between the yellow plates. Uh, it was difficult to plan how to shoot this stage in the dark. I am going to thread the needle a little too closely at some point here and end up tagging one of the no-shoots. Fortunately, they're only worth plus five seconds. This is something I generally try to avoid, but it seems to happen every so often. My momentary switch on the X300 that I normally just put pressure on got bumped to the on position right before I went to conduct my reload. I think that's it. I'm 14th on this stage with 47.82% of the winner's score. On this stage, the shooter starts with a handgun and engages eight steel and one paper target from around the car. They then ground the handgun, retrieve their rifle, and engage three paper targets around the car and four steel swinging targets out to about 100 yards. From this position, I'm going to engage six of the steel targets, then going to move to the front, engage the one paper target and the two remaining steel targets. The grounding box for the handgun is helpfully highlighted with a red glow stick. This is one area where the lighting conditions on the range really don't show up well on video. There's enough ambient light from other stadium lights on the trap and skeet range a few hundred yards away that I don't need to use my weapon light at all to engage the targets at distance. You can actually see the sparks on the target in a couple of cases here. 
On this stage, I am fourth with 81.21% of the winner's score. On this stage, there are seven paper targets outside the chopper to be engaged with the handgun. Shooter grounds the handgun, retrieves the rifle inside the chopper, and engages the four hanging plates at 50 yards from two different positions. I think getting in the chopper in the dark and safely acquiring the rifle was probably the most difficult part of the stage. On this side, you're not really going to see anything because my weapon light is on the left side of the rifle and I'm bracing on the left side of the port I'm shooting through. I now move forward to the front window of the chopper to engage the targets again. From this position, I'm shooting off the right side of the window so you can see my weapon light. But because of the target distance and the angle at which I'm engaging, you really can't see the targets themselves. On this stage, I am sixth with 75.98% of the winner's score. In the end, I am eighth out of 50 shooters with 65.42% of the winner's score. Thank you for watching. Come back again for more match and multi-gun competition content.